and welcome back to Napoleon Total War with the Pike and Shorts mod. Today we're hoping to fight the Hanoverians in a land battle, but I'm also hoping to fight the Danish in a naval battle. But before any of that, we need to continue on uh, the story of what happened in the last episode, because we were preparing to defend against an Ottoman attack at Belgrade. The thing is, they attacked in turn, so there was two defense battles of Belgrade, and unfortunately, when I tried to load back the save after those two battles, it completely crashed the game. Like, I wasn't able to load into the save, and I had to jump back three saves. So, I only ever did one of the siege defenses, and we'll see that one right here. A very bloody siege defense indeed. I was able to set up the mortar so we were firing right at the entrance, killing loads of them. Prepared killing fields in a spectacular way. Unfortunately though, as I said, the it crashed, so I was able, only able to do one of them. And I got bored and I decided, you know what, I'm not going to continue to try and do this when you know the game's not working with me, so we're going to try and... Uh, finesse our way through another area. So what I did was I signed a peace treaty with the Ottomans. So currently we are even trading with them. I don't trust them though. So I've got my army set up. We've got in Thessaloniki, we've got uh, Leopold Willem, and in Bucharest we've got Longevald. So these guys are set up to attack these guys or defend uh, whatever comes our way. With that, I'm actually going to reform Piccolomini's army. We can see here it's quite a well-situated or well-made army. Well, not actually. It's not actually well-made at all. Um, that's the problem. We need to uh, redo the army, and then I'm going to send them against the Transylvanians, because I have an idea that we'll actually be able to capture a load of territories, and it won't crash. And I didn't even try this one. I just sort of figured that it wouldn't work for some reason. Uh, as I was probably trying to make them a uh, protectorate. So that's what we're going to do there. But that's not for day today. Today we're going to do Hanover. So I've already tested this out. So the Hanoverians will sally forth and attack us. Because the thing was, I was laying siege. And I was figuring that, you know what, I didn't have any mortars or anything to fire into the fort. And it's going to be a complete mess. It takes forever to break down the walls. And you'd really need multiple entries to uh, make an effective siege. And so, and also because if it fails after I've done like an hour battle, that's just such a waste of time to try and do that again. If it's just like, because I feel like there, there is a crash that occurs just because you're in turn. It doesn't matter what has happened during the turn. And I feel like I sometimes mistake those crashes for stuff that I actually did in-game, um, in capturing territory or whatever. So I think we can work around that. But if I'm going to work around that, I want to be able to capture it like that. I don't want to have to go t through like a half an hour or an hour battle every time I try to try that because that's just so labor intensive. So what we're going to do is going to try and, uh, well, I already know because I've ended turn and I've seen that they will attack. So they will attack out, will completely destroy it, 
then will attack. They still get a high garrison for the area, but I have a much greater chance of making an easy victory that I can repeat um, until uh, we actually get a turn that passes through, so I will actually capture the territory. And we will try something similar on other territories, like Dresden and uh, Berlin at one point, and Oldenburg at one point, and see if we might be able to buy this off this territory of the Spanish. The Spanish, though, have lost this area, so it could be that we might push through, capture this, and then trade it for this area, because that's a very valuable trade, because this is a proper like city with multiple uh, building locations. And it's got university and lots of good stuff. This has only a mine and something they have. The Spanish haven't even uh, decided to. It's another mine. It's all mines. It, it, that's actually kind of useful. Um, and this province makes a whole lot of money, doesn't it? Twenty-seven thousand for this area. That's insane. Normally, I would say um, this one has forty-four thousand. Um, so yeah, that will work out there. And then I mentioned a Danish naval battle. So as I end the turn up there to figure out the best way of dealing with that, the Danish, actually there's a Danish fleet hiding somewhere here, I think, or is it on this side? It will attack the Spanish fleet, it will defeat it, and then will it try to attack my ivory navy. The thing though, it will attack it, but it doesn't have the movement range to pursue us or they just decide to, they wanted to um, you know force us off so they can get the ivory so after that they've done that we of course will draw in all the good ships and then we'll destroy them especially since they probably received quite a bit of damage from the Spanish fleet Spanish would have done well though to actually send the fleet in for repair or maybe call out more allied ships. With that said, nothing of this will occur until I spin the wheel. So let's go ahead and end turn and then hopefully all will go according to plan. Very interesting. Not this part. This part I've foreseen. This is going according to plan. The thing though is I tried this... I, I kind of tried this multiple times and end doing the end turn over and over again and in each one the Danish fleet wins the naval battle for some reason in this one this one that I decide to record the Danish fleet is defeated it makes the job for me sinking them a whole lot easier but I didn't know the variable could change like that like the they're like the AI, like it changed in that way. I thought it was a like preset, you know, these stats here and there. This fleet is going to win. This time the Danish lost. Um, so my plan, it isn't going according to plan, but it's actually going better than planned. With that said, this guy has a lot of stars. For a small little shitty area of Germany that hasn't been fighting at all. Well, they did fight quite a lot against our invasions. But for an area that, um, you know, hasn't actively been fighting for a long time. They have very high stats for their troops. But enough talking though. If we're going to get anywhere, we need to defeat them. And defeat them I shall. The battle is about to commence. The enemy is marching down from the high ground down upon here. Now, I'm trying a little bit of a different strategy here. I'm going to do like a... F We're going to fire the first line. I'm going to fire it for as long as possible. As the enemy gets closer, it's going to retreat. Second line is going to take over. And once the enemy gets close to them, we're going to... and You know, so and so on. So, until we get all the way back to the pikes. And once we're all way down at the pikes, then the gunners will retreat behind the pikes. And uh, we'll let whatever's made it that far um, be, uh, you know, brought to bear or 
have to uh, then fight the uh, the pikes. I'm surprised that these assholes managed to somehow bypass or be able to uh, withstand the attack of all of that and be able to reach all the way to our cavalry. Looks like they're actually putting a lot of heavy emphasis on our right flank or at least in terms of where they're sending their cavalry you should speed up you should speed up so they have two cavalry it's Karaziers. it's early very heavily armored we need to send our guys over here our new German guards are good but not as good as the, um, or at least they do not have really the same ability as these uh, guard units. Alright, our cannibals are starting to strike the enemy. Soon enough they'll be within range of the first line and we'll start what uh, I had in mind from the start. Right, we're going to set up so we have all four squadrons of cavalry or regiments of cavalry ready to engage with the enemy. They're moving far and wide around here. Right, move on to that field over there. And then you will move like that. And the enemy is moving on. In a concentrated fashion. And we will return fire. Unleash hell. Might have uh, been a clever plan just to uh, unsettle my cavalry positions. Who knows? Might have been able to uh, concentrate my troops a little bit better. This unit is not firing at all. And it could actually be that as the enemy advances here, it might be better to have that one situated like that. And then we concentrate these three ready them to be the ones to take over, as it were. Alright, you know what? I've had enough of your stupid maneuvering. I'm ordering attacks. And you will uh, go around here. And that'll be good. They're not close as of yet. And the gunnering line is fine. Keep punishing these guys. There's no way the uh, enemy will win the uh, will win the cavalry fight. So I'm safe in that. And I definitely do need to win the cavalry fight though, because I'm gonna need that cavalry. To chase down every last one of the survivors. The it's kind of painful watching this because the AI has such good units here, or like high chevron units. And the way they're using them is awful. I guess they've gone close enough. We're going to retreat these two. The way they're moving now is like... Intentionally... Like... Losing their men. 
move a little bit further back so you know it's not complete All right one of our cavalry units has lost a lot this medium pike is really chasing this guy okay it might be uh, time to actually pull back again because these guys are getting pretty close It's medium pike, we'll just stand and uh, take that one actually. Second line. We'll open fire. I don't think that one has any chance of doing any real damage here. Okay, one of the cavalry units broke over here. It could be we need to win this fight soon. Because the German um, cavalry guards are not doing that well. I think my plan worked pretty well in like firing retreat. It's just that the enemy is not playing ball with me. And. Uh, They keep kind of uh, retreating past everything, or like moving um, not as I want them. Not that it's going in their favor, though. Uh, finally, we had to fight that cavalry unit down to the man. Now we join battle again. Okay, where we got a unit that is retreating. Our cannons are shooting through our own unit. Cavalry is soon about to uh, win their fight. They're tired. I. That's orderful with the pikes then. Cannons will hold fire. And I will actually send out the general to take care of this one. Cavalry. They really fight to the very end. Super bloody fight. Luckily for me though, I'm not going to need a whole lot of cavalry in a siege battle. Gunners will retire. The pikes will move forward. Wonderful. Why don't you move over the hedgerow like that and as you do that you will fall back and you guys can open up on this one you can move a little bit forward there yeah these guys will follow and they will be trapped in between those and killed my cavalry finally won their fight after uh, having to literally kill them to a man. Chase down that one. You've dealt with that one. You had plenty of times to prepare against that, but didn't. Let's see. Larger cavalry unit attacking over there. My plan, as uh, well as I thought it would go, 
is, uh, I mean, the enemy is holding on for so for such a long time, and it's really that that's causing so many casualties on among my men. But it looks like we've won here. The battle is over. But we took a lot of casualties for um, Pappenheim's army. Luckily though, I've got a second one to uh, be brought in. But I don't want to see a single enemy soldier leave the battlefield. With that said, I will now say that this one is won for our side. It went according to plan as much as I was able to completely destroy their force. Not a single one of their soldiers survived. I did suffer, uh, not as many as I thought I did, but quite a few units suffered quite heavy losses. This one right here has only 89 men left. We probably could have done better by sending in more of the pikes. Uh, 500 men though is not that bad considering considering the enemy fought to the very end. Highest killers, as we see through here, pikes, and uh, the Österreich musketeer regiments. Good. Enemy destroyed. So the enemy was destroyed. It's time then to lay the siege. So we'll have Tilly move into position. He does not have the movement range. So, uh, we'll order Pappenheim to lay the siege just to make sure that the enemy cannot recruit any troops. Damn, they get a lot of troops. This time around, they got no Mortister. It's going to make it easier for me to win the battle. Almost to the point where I can possibly auto-resolve it. But we're going to lay a siege. And I'm, uh, since it might has have difficulty of crashing and... Siege battles are not that interesting in the long run. We're going to go ahead and do that off camera. So the Danish fleet this time around actually lost the battle. I'm surprised here though that quite a few of their ships seem to actually still uh, be functioning. Or like 
in good condition, like 60 guns. It's just... yeah, they can attack, right. I think we just send in the galleons. Because the thing is, it looks kind of weird when you're sending in the the trade the India Man trade ship because the the ship design is of a like a later ship design style, isn't it? Alright, we get two reinforcement. Not that I need them. They have three galleons against our six, seven galleons. Wonderful. Two of their ships. Three of their ships. Have been through the ringer. Actually, all of them have, I think. Because uh, they've lost quite a bit of manpower. With that said, let's draw into battle, shall we? So, I was successful in taking the Danish fleet. We lost quite a bit of troops, though, in the process. Um, and we even lost one of our ships. It exploded. I did take two of theirs. And we did take that that small Danish fleet that was so cute. It was a tiny, tiny little ship. Uh, only one crew member alive. We're gonna take both of these and put them in our fleet. Wonderful. How did these get wounded? They were barely in the fight. Anyways, we're gonna have to move all the way back to the closest port, which is way back here. The thing though is, I've got plenty of ships moving this way to go ahead and replace whatever we lost here. I did note that there's a big force of rebels taking over Gibraltar. It would be nice to hold Gibraltar because I could easily reinforce my trade forces down here, which would be um, very good, especially now since we actually got nations threatening this area. 
not very well, but they are threatening this area. So, for the next one, I'm hoping that Hanover will be mine. And I would prepare the trap for Dresden. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. But with that, I'll say as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.